House Chairperson, so much of the hope that our country will rise to a prosperous society that is located in the Bill of Rights, which obliges the government to provide the basic services to all those who live in it. The painful reality of the state of our nation today is that the ANC is failing spectacularly to deliver on the mandate of the Bill of Rights. Mr. President, your administration has squandered so much public goodwill to become the biggest disappointment of our democracy. Many of us gave you the benefit of doubt that you will live up to the promise of a new dawn. We all believed in good faith that your patriotism will force you to choose what is best for the country, even if it wasn't best for the party. But what did you do? You blew it. You betrayed the public goodwill to choose your party over the country over and again. While your praise singers paraded you as the Messiah who would lead South Africa into the promised land, you have turned out to be a smooth talker, high on promise but low on delivery. The true state of the nation is that many South Africans no longer have the patience to give your government more time to do the simplest task of delivering basic services. Your government's mishandling of the economy is inflicting insufferable pain on millions of South Africans who are struggling to survive. While you squander 600,000 feeding guests in the presidential jet, thousands of families can't even afford to put bread on the table. When all South Africans offered their goodwill to you to at least live up to your promise about lifestyle audits for ministers, what did you do? You blow it. Mr. President, the sauna was not the victory parade that you attempted to portray. In fact, what it did was to expose your government as a serial underachiever that is content with mediocrity. And you have consistently proven now that you are beyond rehabilitation for anyone to believe that you can perform better. <laughs> More South Africans are unemployed today than they were when you first came to office. With youth unemployment standing at 43.4%, little has changed for a lot of young people who are still struggling to find a job. So for all you are boasting about Tintualo, there are thousands of young people who have never worked a day in their life. And they will likely never ever work a day in their lifetime for as long as you are the president of this country. If you go to Soweto and Soshanguve, there are tens of thousands of young unemployed graduates who are struggling to find jobs because of your administration's economic policies. These young people have been sentenced to a lifetime of despair by your government. For them, Every single day in their lives is a brutal reminder that the government has left them behind. Those of us who live in villages are witnesses to your administration's legacy of non-delivery. Minister Nkadi Meng, your legacy of failure as the mayor of Polukwane is, unforge is unforgettable for those of us who come there. In Polukwane today, from Radikhali to Mulej, we still have communities that must wait once a week for a municipal truck to deliver water to them. In this day and age, are you not ashamed that the access to water is denied? To, to Minister Mkunu, to Mr. Minister Mkunu, in Deben, as we speak, in Deben North, in Phoenix, in Verlam, there have been water disruptions for the past five weeks. Five weeks. And to the Minister of Social Development, more children go to bed hungry under President Ramaphosa than they did before. Just last year, the Nelson Mandela Foundation revealed that close to 5 million children in our country are starving. Minister Mantashe, it is very ironic to boast about the number of households that have been electrified since 1994 when we spent more days without electricity than we do with it due to load shedding. And according to independent estimates, ESCOM shared the equivalent of 283 days in 2023, costing the economy 1.3 trillion I'm sorry, in honorable lost activity. Member, honorable. The Honorable Doug Moore tried really, really hard yesterday to change the city of Cape Town. 
But you see, facts are more powerful than opinions. And facts are that, according to NetBank's capital expenditure project listing for 2023, the general government announced 1.3 billion worth of projects, and 60% of all these projects are from the city of Cape Town, including 45 billion on upgrading waterway sewers, road infrastructure, and 24 billion minimizing load shedding. Mr. President, state capture is a product of your comrades' appetite for nice things they can afford. It was ANC cadres who were recipients of bribes. So while you preach zero tolerance against corruption, but you still can fire ministers who were identified by the state capture report for getting involved in corruption. Mr. President, when you loop yourself in the mirror, do you absolutely believe that the deputy president is beyond reproach? Do you absolutely believe that the deputy president is a man of integrity? Because every time you have had an opportunity to show the country that you are serious Order, about fighting members, corruption, all you did was to blow it. So the next election is going to be an opportunity to reset our country on the path of prosperity. And if truth be told, we need to rescue our country from further destruction by the ANC. This election is a choice between a legacy of broken Order promises at the back, and members. the promise of a prosperous South Africa. And if there is one government that has leveraged the power of good governance to fulfill the promise of our democracy, it is DA governments. From the provision of basic services to job creation, DA governments are doing more to fulfill the promise of our democracy. The increasing migration to the Western Cape is a massive vote of confidence in the work of the government here. The Western Cape has the lowest unemployment rate in the country. And of the 27 best municipalities in the country, the majority are run by the DA. And many of you here, you know that because you live in those municipalities. <laughs> DA municipalities regularly outperform national average on key metrics such as quality of water, sanitation, and refuse removal. So if you go to Midval or Umgeni, life is generally better for residents under a DA government than an ANC government. And you see, the shortcomings, the shortcomings of the country's education system are not only visible in the failure of children to read and write for meaning. They are also visible in the personalities of ministers and ANC members who can read statistics. So, Minister Nzimande, ah, it's a pity how the blade has gone blunt over time. <laughs> there are currently 645 unemployed junior doctors in the county. Who completed, their, who completed their community service in December, and they haven't been placed. One of them, one of them, Tahalo Tibela, comes from Violet Bank, where the Honorable Lamola would know very well because it is in Bushbag Ridge. And Honorable Mutwale, you've got a very important mm. job. Focus on making sure that the provision of ID, passports, and our borders, and our borders are secure. I know that I know that you are still not over not being the Minister of Health, but let's move on. And the Honourable Mabuyani, I understand your dilemma. The best of the Eastern Cape is in the DA, so you are left with the worst of it. The Honourable Premier of the Northern Cape, keep doing those bilateral meetings with the Western Cape Premier that you initiated. You will be on the right track because best practice must be shared and executed. So for all of us to fully enjoy the fruits of our democracy, we must rescue our country from the clutches of further destruction. This is why a DA government will not introduce new taxes to protect the middle class from the rising cost of living. We will increase social grants to match the poverty line to empower poor people to provide for their families. We will professionalize the public service by getting rid of cadre deployment. 
So South Africa, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to vote for a government that will give true meaning to realize the freedoms that so many fought for. I thank you, Honorable Member.